Now in this lesson we're going to talk about showing form in our painting. And a lot of subjects are very detailed and it's hard to really suggest the shape in our painting. For instance, these um, I have a series of photographs here from around Point Lobos in California, in Northern California. And it has a lot of cliffs, a lot of shape and form, but it's hard to sort through the detail on some of it. So what we want to do is how to see form first and then as much detail as we want to later. So how to simplify what we see so that the detail just doesn't hit us in the face like this does. All this variation of small value changes. If we see that first, it really distorts the, the painting and we lose any shape in it. So first thing I want to do is look at it compositionally and it's just too big. My focal point is this tunnel in here uh, looking through the rock, uh, the color in the water. So this area right in here is my focal point. And it gives me way too much rock in the background as well as the foreground. So I want to zoom in on that. I want some of the foreground and a lot of this color variation in the water. So I'm going to go first with a vertical composition here. And you can get a couple of paintings out of this. I think it has a lot of variation in it compositionally. It has everything in it that I still liked. It gets rid of a lot of what I don't need. That way I can focus more on this and less on so much of that detailed rock. It also now gives me more water shape and less cliff shape. Before is about half and half and I want something to dominate more than others. So Shape wise, I have more water here, a little less rock. Now what I want to do is be able to see this in terms of form. By that I mean I want everything to read three values. So first in here I have, let's just take this rock area. I have the shadow area. Then I'm gonna, and I'm gonna force everything into this. Then I have a half tone area. So this will be lighter. And then I have the light. Now again over here is more of a shadow. But that gives me three values. It simplifies it. And of course I'm not thinking color here. Now what I've done is just gotten rid of all that little detail. I can lose some edges, soften some edges a bit. But I'm forcing everything into dark and light and halftone. I have to remember the sun is coming from the right, pretty strong from the side. So every form that's facing to the right is going to be sunlight. It's going to be my light value. Everything for, uh, facing the viewer will be halftone. And then everything facing towards the left or um, in the dark area on the other side is going to be shadow. And if I can see it this way first, it's going to work a lot better. And more often than not, it means not painting what you see but painting what you know. In other words, I look at this and there's a lot of little darks and lights. And if we see that, it shows no form. But if I can look at it first and pick out shadows, and the shadows here aren't always real dark. This, this is a cast shadow from the rock. Some form shadow. And I'm going to see this shape in here is shadow and some shadow there. So it's those areas facing away from the light. Then the half tone is a little less easier to see, but I have to force it in there. So I've got half tone here, and I'm forcing a bit more in there. I'm gonna make a half tone. Now, the half tone is on the light side most of the time. So there might be a subtle change between the half tone and the light, but there's always a definite change between the dark and the light, or the dark and the half tone. So the dark is always real separate. The light and half tone can have some variation. I'll go into this cliff here. All this is shadow. Even though there's some lighter darks in there, I might have two or three darks. Start with one overall dark, and then the rest is light area. Now there's greens and everything in there, but we're not talking color change. So that one is a lot less halftone, or I guess none, and a light and a dark. Now again, all the variation in, in this is in the shadow. So we want to really simplify, and this Things like down in here, the rocks on the bottom left. Again, I'm going to have to force changes in there. Here's my shadow. I'm going to get a definite shadow in there. may not be this squared off, only because my point here is squared off. But it's going to be very definite. I would rather have straighter edges. And have a, you know, real, it looks more solid if my edges are more right angles every time I form changes it's more of a right angle. My light here now is darker and I'm going to start with all light and then put the half tone in. 
there's the simple view of the light and dark and then my half tone again the lights coming from the right so as it starts to turn into the shadow we get the half tone because the rock is somewhat rounded so as it gradually gets to the darker side it's going to get more half tone and if i can block it in that way it's going to work the darks aren't really this dark the darks are um, kind of a lighter dark And I say that because if I get my lights this light, my darks can't be black like that. Uh, now, in reality, the, this, the whole rocks down here might be a bit darker than what I've done. But I've, I've simplified some confusing values and just made them three. And that's how I want to see that. Same thing back in here. If I, That's why we, we try and find the shadow pattern first. This would be the dark in here. And if I can, even squinting at the photograph har, uh, helps. Squinting was what we always had to do painting outside. It really emphasized squinting. Or if you're painting the figure or looking at a still life, squinting helps you see simplified shape into just simple dark and light. And I don't have to get this perfect. In other words, if I take this and pull it all into the shadow, it's still going to work. It's going to flatten out that area a little bit, but that's okay. I don't need to show that much form. I might want to just flatten all that in there. And that's still going to work. And then I have my light. And there's actually a half tone in there too. But back in the background, I can get away with a little less value variation. <clears throat> I'd still have a half tone. Make this my lights. But I don't have to have very much variation. And then my half tone. Again, the half tone is on the light side. Now, the more complicated it gets, the more the half tone changes two or three times. The, you have two or three lights, several darks. And that's when it starts to get busy. But I, at least in the block end, I try and keep it as simple as possible. Now, if I can make my painting read like that in the background, it's going to work. And that's what I want to do. Same thing with the of course, the, the foreground up in here. So going from that, simplifying it more is our is our purpose here. Uh, and also the same thing in the water. I want I have a basic color, kind of a bluish violet, some green, blue green, and I want to keep the value simple in there also. Now looking at a few paintings here, even though there's a lot of color variation, and as, as paint's fairly thin, this is more almost a watercolor look, but it is an oil. And while there's a lot of color variation in here, there's not a lot of value. He's got mostly light. If I go into the saturation and make this a black and white, you can see the value changes. The lights in here, half tones. He's only got a few real dark darks, dark accents in the rock. It's all light and half tone and that shows the form. Same thing in the water, some color variation, but basically two values in the darker blue and maybe two values in the foam. So simplifying the values too. Same thing in the greens. A lot of broken color, but basically just two values. So his values are very simple here. It's his color that he breaks it up. It makes it look, that broken color, same value, different color, really helps the painting look more refined. Same thing in here, this is by Orrin White. And it's very low sun, this is uh, sunset. He's got the light areas in here that is lighter and warmer, and some back in here. And the rest is shadow, there's very little half tone. There's several different values in the dark. You can see the basic value change, everything's in shadow except a strip of light back there, and an area of light right there and everything else is in shadow. Again, very close values, and all the variation is in the shadow. A lot of nice variation of color in the water, but the water itself is about two or three values. We have about three values in there. So think less about value change and more about just, just color change. This is another, a lot of nice color in this water. Color maybe we wouldn't think of using, but it works real well. Several different greens in here, orange green, green, yellow green and then the red violet, blue violet, but it all works real well. Same thing, the rocks in here is a lot of color change. He has not a lot of, of value change. Now there's, there is some smaller darks and lights in there, but it still reads together as a bigger shape against the uh, lighter water. So the simpler we can keep it, the better. Last one, this is a Hanson put off. And I like his work because it's, it's, he simplifies so much you can see just the big pattern of shadow on the cliffs here. 
shadow on the cliffs here and then just the simple light. Here's your half tone right in there and then the light and then the dark. So he's really thinking simple light and dark. Same thing in the trees. That dark pattern, they simplified the uh, values to make the shapes easier to read, to see the form a lot better. 